Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off the water supply underneath the sink. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the KitchenAid dishwasher volute. It's going to be a very easy repair and it'll only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new volute. The volute seals the circulation motor to the sump. The main reason you be changing it out, so if it's damaged, you're getting water leaking on the floor. In order to change out the part, we have to pull the dishwasher out of the cabinet. First thing we're going to do is go underneath the sink and disconnect the lines. Now that we're underneath the cabinets, you want to make sure that the dishwasher is still unplugged, and you may want to throw a towel down. When we take off the fill line and the drain hose, there's going to be some water that comes out. First, we're going to disconnect the fill line. It's connected right here to the hot water valve. You want to make sure the water valve is off. And then we're going to use our 5 8 inch wrench to loosen up the hose. Once you have it broke free, you can just reach in and unscrew it by hand. Once you have it off, you can just set it down. And then we can take off the drain hose. To take the drain hose off, you just want to follow it up to wherever it goes. It may go to the garbage disposal. Ours goes up to the air gap. Once you locate the end of it, we're going to take a 5 16 nut driver and loosen up the clamp. Once you have the clamp loose, you can pull it free and set it down. Once you have everything disconnected underneath the sink, we're going to open up the dishwasher door and remove both the racks. In order to get the lower one out, all you have to do is pull it out, lift it off, and set it aside. Then we're going to take the upper rack out. We're just going to pull it out. And on this dial, we have to swing the end cap over to unlock it on each side. Once you have both sides released, we're going to pull the rack out and then lift up on it. And pull it out and lift the rear wheels out. Once you have it free, you can set it aside. Then you can push the rails back in so they're out of the way. And then we have to remove the stuff from the top of the sump. We're going to start with the spray arm. We're just going to grab the retainer with the pliers and then spin the spray arm counterclockwise until it unscrews itself. And you can lift it off and set it aside. Now that we have the spray arm out of the way, we can remove the water supply tube that goes up to the top. There's a clip in the middle and the clip on top. If you have that upper basket in the way, you'll have to pull that out. And then we're just going to reach up with a small flathead screwdriver and pop one of the clips off and pull down on the supply tube so the other side comes out. Once you have this one out, we can do the one in the middle. Once you have the middle tabs released, if you have this upper tray, we're going to pull it out so we can get the spray arm out from behind it. Then we're going to go down to the sump and turn the water supply tube clockwise so these three tabs come out and we can lift it out. Once you have it out, you can pull it out of the dishwasher. Then we can grab the spray arm support washer and pull it out. Now we're going to take the top of the sump off. We're going to use the Torque 20 driver to take out the screws to hold it down. Once you have the screws out, you can just lift the cover off and set it aside. Once you have the cover off, if it's really dirty and you got a bunch of glass underneath there, you want to make sure you clean that up first. Once you have it cleaned up, we have to remove this cover. We're going to take the Torque 15 driver and take the screw out. Once you have the screw out, we're going to take the small flathead screwdriver and get right in here on the cover and press that way towards the outside to release the locking tab. And you can lift up the cover and pull it out. Now we can reach down and pull the chopper assembly out. The chopper and the screen and where it locks onto the shaft is all one piece. 
it's spring loaded so we're just gonna take a flathead screwdriver and kind of pull it off the motor drive shaft and then lift it out of the sump once you have it free you can pull it out now that we have everything off we can use the Phillips screwdriver to take out the screws that hold the dishwasher to the countertop Once you have the screws out, we're going to lift up on the door and use it to carefully pull the dishwasher out of the cabinets. Once you have it started, you can grab the frame and pull it out the rest of the way. Once you have the dishwasher out, we're going to lay it on the right side. So we're going to put a towel down so we don't damage the floor. Once you have the towel down, you can just carefully lay it on the side. Now that we have the dishwasher on its side, we have access to the motor, it's right here in the middle. If your model has this piece here, we're going to remove it in order to get to the bolt easier. There's a quarter inch screw on the top and the bottom. We use the quarter inch nut driver to take them out. Now we're going to use a small flathead screwdriver to release the locking tabs. There's one on the top and one on the bottom. Once you have it released, we're just going to swing this assembly out of the way and set it down. Now we're going to remove the wiring harness from the bottom of the motor. There's a locking tab on each side. This inside one's pretty tight, so I'm just going to press the inside one with the small flathead screwdriver, the outside one with my finger, and pull down on it. Once you have it free, you can set it aside. Now that we have the wiring harness off, we have to remove the long screw that holds the motor to the sump. It's up here behind this cover. We're going to use a 3 inch socket with a ratchet and a long extension. Once you have the screw unscrewed, you can pull that and the paper out together. Once you have the screw out, we're just going to turn the motor counterclockwise till it stops and then pull out on it. If it's stuck, you can wiggle it. Once you have it free, you can pull it off the dishwasher. Now that we have the motor out, we're going to put it on a towel so we don't scratch anything. We have to take the flute off, so we have to unscrew the impeller first. In order to do that, there's these four openings on the back of the motor. We're going to take a flathead screwdriver and stick it in there. You want to make sure you're hitting the rotor and holding it and not hitting the wires. You don't want to damage anything. Then we can unscrew the impeller from the other end. Once you have the impeller off, you can set it aside and pull the screwdriver out of the other end. And then we're going to pull the flute off. Make sure you don't lose the washer or the seal. We have to change that out and put it on the new one. The new flute doesn't come with a seal, so we have to take this one out and swap it over. If it looks damaged or worn, or this ceramic seat is damaged, it's not going to seal again, so you may want to change it out. To get it out, we're just going to flip it over, and from the back side, carefully get behind it and push it out. Once you have it out, set it aside. Here's the old volute next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. Looks like they redesigned it, but it'll go in and work just fine. Before we put the new loop back on the motor, we're going to put the seal back in it. We're just going to get it wet and the loop, just some water so it slides down in there easier. You just want to carefully make sure it's in there nice and flat. And once you get it started, 
you can just press down on it to seat it all the way. Want to make sure that the back side, the, the metal is flush with the bottom right there. Once you have it seated properly, you can put it back on the motor. Just going to carefully set it down onto the motor shaft. And you want to turn it so these arrows are lined up. Then we can put the impeller back in. If your washer and ceramic seal fell out, you just want to put those back in before you put it onto the motor shaft. Once you get it started, we're going to take the screwdriver and same as before, we're going to put it down into the rotor part of the motor. Make sure you don't hit any of the windings. Hold it in place while we tighten down the impeller. Once you have the impeller tightened down, we can put the motor back in the dishwasher. Before you put the motor back in, you want to make sure the housing and the screen are clean. The screen's really dirty, you may have to pull it out and clean it. Once you have the screen cleaned up, you want to make sure this tab goes onto the tab on the housing so it holds it in place and put it back in. Now we can put the motor in. You want to make sure that the arrows are still lined up on the housing. And when you put the motor in, you want to make sure that this slot on the volute goes right on this tab right here on the housing over at 9 o'clock. And then before you put it in, we're also going to get the housing and the volute seal wet to make it easier to slide into the pump. Once you have it ready, you can get the little tab over there at 9 o'clock and push it in. Once you have it seated, we're going to turn the motor clockwise again to lock it in, and then we can put the screw back in. To put the screw in the shield back in, we're going to put the screw through the shield first and then kind of get it up in place. And we're gonna grab the three inch socket with the ratchet and the extension to put it back in place. Once you have the screw tightened down, we can reconnect the wire harness. All you have to do is grab the wire harness and plug it in. Make sure it snaps on so you get a good connection. Now we can lift up the bracket and put it back on. Just have to line up the two tabs, their mounting spots, and snap it in. Then we can use the quarter inch nut driver to put in the screws that hold it on. Once you have that on, we can put the dishwasher back up on its feet. Once you have it back up on its feet, you can pull the towel out. Now we have to reach underneath and put the lines through the cabinets. We want to push the dishwasher in about halfway. Then we can go underneath the sink and pull on the lines to make sure they're not caught on anything. Then we can push the dishwasher in the rest of the way. Now we can reconnect the drain hose to the air gap. Once you have it pushed up into place, we're going to use our 5 16 inch nut driver to tighten down the clamp. Once you have the drain line hooked up, we can hook up the water line. 
All you have to do is get it started by hand. Once you have it snug, we can reach in with our 5 8 inch wrench to tighten it down so it doesn't leak. Once you have the lines reconnected, you can close the cabinets, open up the dishwasher door, and then we're going to use the Phillips screwdriver to put in the screws that hold the dishwasher to the countertop. To put the chopper in, you want to make sure that the cutout is in the down position, and then we have to make sure that this engages with the motor shaft. So we're going to push the chopper out a little bit and get this wrench behind here so we can guide it down into place and then pull the wrench out so those engage. Once you have it ready, we're just going to lower it down into the slot right there. Once you have it in place, you can pull the wrench out and just look in there to make sure that they're engaged with the motor shaft. Once you have it in there, we can put the cover on. When you put the cover on, you want to make sure the locking tab goes down in the slot right there. You just have to set it into place. And then we can use the Torque 15 driver to put the screw in. Once you have the cover on, we can put the top on. To put the top on, you just want to line it up, set it down into place. Then we can use the Torque 20 driver to put in the screws that hold it down. Once you have the screws in, we can put the wash arm support with the washer in. All you have to do is set it in place. Now we're going to put the water supply tube back in. We're just going to put it back into the right rear corner. If you need to pull this upper tray out if you have it, to get it out of the way you can. We're just going to set it in place. Then we're going to make sure that the fitting goes over the sump here. The power spray comes off, you can set it aside, we'll put it on in a minute. Once you have it locked in place, if your power wash came off, you can just snap it back in. And then we're going to reach up and make sure that the middle clip is locked in. Just have to press and lock it in. And we can do the upper one. To put the lower spray arm back in, we're just going to set it onto the support. Then we're going to grab the support with the pliers, kind of lift up on it a little bit and spin the spray arm clockwise so it locks in. Once you have it tightened down, you can put the racks back in. To put the lower dish rack back in, all you have to do is set it on the door, push it back into place. Then we're going to pull out the upper dish rack rails and swing the end caps out of the way. Then to put the upper dish rack back on, we're going to line up the rear rollers on each side. Then we can push it back and get the front rollers in on each side. Then we can close the end caps and push it back in the rest of the way. Once you have it in, you can close the dishwasher door. Then we can plug it back in, turn the water back on, and take a first spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.